Next we have Light Lighthearted uh, Fantasy and Science Fiction by Bill Cutler. I'm going to be reading from my um, novel, The Bell of Caledon. It's a fantasy novel. Um, in it, a group of people are traveling, uh, trying to find this Bell of Caledon. At this point in the story, uh, the leader of the group, a shaman named Goran, has decided he will try to reach the people beyond the stars in this book, People Have Died, uh, the, actually the ancient shaman beyond the stars, to let him know uh, where this bell is. The travelers remained silent as they finished their meals. They were in a brief period of respite. If something were said, they could be reminded of the realities of their journey. Too soon, it seemed, Carlin brought back those realities. It's time to join Goran as he tries to contact those who have gone beyond, he said. There is nothing we can do other than be with him. Our presence is part of what he, he will need to survive. Outside there are torches for each of us. We will light them and go to the tower where Goran will be waiting. He will lead us to the ancient grove of trees. There the attempt will be made. It is best to remain silent. Do not talk to Gordon. He paused to look into the faces of those at the table. Let's go. The group walked slowly through the cabin door and found the torches just outside. Carlin took one and went back to the cabin. He returned momentarily with the torch lit, bow presumed from the fireplace. Garland lit, Carlin lit the others and they started walking to the tower. Gorin stood at the entrance to the tower with the other chamois. His hood was over his head. He seemed even taller than before. He was so motionless, Bo wondered if he was breathing. Without a word, Gorin started walking toward the forest. He did not take his eyes from the ground. Still, he headed straight to a trail that Bo would not notice during his walk around the area. Goran entered the trail, followed by the other shaman, Carlin, and the rest of the travelers. The dark of the night was now complete, and Bo felt he was in another world. The only things to see in this world were the fluttering shadows of the intruders cast by their torches. The shadows were long, but no shadow was longer than that of the shaman who led them. Soon, Bo sensed he had stepped into a clearing. The torches cast their light to the trees just beyond the edge of the clearing. Their trunks were so wide, he could not imagine their age. The trees climbed into the darkness and disappeared. Bo wondered if they climbed forever. Goran stepped into the center of the clearing head still bowed to the ground. The other chamois walked to the opposite end of the clearing from the entrance, turned to face Goran, and planted their torches in the ground. Carlin looked at the rest of the travelers and motioned toward the edge of the clearing. Each one took a place on the edge, making a circle around Goran. Carlin stuck his torch in the ground in front of him as the chamois had, and the rest followed. Goran's shadow was cast from each torch, creating the image of the spokes of a wheel radiating from him to the edge of the clearing. He raised his head, took a deep, audible breath, and exhaled. He reached into a pocket in his robe and took out a small glass vial. He, took, he looked down at it and removed the cork. Then he raised his head, looked straight up, and poured the contents into his mouth. For a few moments, he stood motionless, staring up through the night sky. The chamois spread out among the travelers. To each, they sang a musical tone and motioned with a raised hand to match the sound. With each new pitch, Bo felt a harmonic puzzle being assembled. When the chamois had given tones to all the travelers, they added their own. When the last was added, the sound filled the clearing with a forest 
drawn from everyone in the circle. Then, still motionless, Gorin began some kind of chant. He repeated the chant a few times, then went back to motionless silence, still looking through the sky. The silence shattered as he screamed and fell to his knees. The scream became high-pitched, childish laughter. Everyone stopped singing. They looked in stunned silence as Gorin crawled on his hands and knees to a spot a few paces from the center. He reached out his right hand and extended his ass finger. He held his hand above the ground for a few moments, then began scratching something in the dirt. He crawled back to the center of the circle, raised his head, and once more to the sky, let out a final scream, and collapsed. Doral was the first to reach the shaman's side, followed closely by the rest of the shaman. She opened his closed eyelids and put an ear to his mouth and chest. He lives, she announced, but barely. The only thing we can do is get it him back to the cabin and let him rest, said Carla. We need to carry him there. The travelers converged around the fallen shaman. LaRue and Tori grabbed his legs, while Raylan and Canuck each took hold of an arm. The elf and the troll looked at each other. Just get him back there, Carla told them. Durrell lifted the fallen torch and led those bearing Lauren back to the tail. Bo could do nothing but look at the powerful shaman being carried like a bag of dirt. He had seen the sight before, Lauren being carried unconscious after extending his powers. He would likely see it again. But the shaman held the group together. Bo knew he would never get used to the sight of their leader powerless. Bo stood near the center of the clearing. The remaining travelers and Shammy gathered the torches that had been dropped in the excitement. He took a few steps and stood over the scratches Goran made in the ground. He heard Carlin say, we'll just have to wait until he regains consciousness. Bo pointed to the ground. Maybe not. Carlin and the Shammy turned to him. They walked to his side and looked where he was pointing. In the dirt, Lauren had written the words, We're all as one. <laughs>